All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're going to talk about Jerron Ennis and Errol Spence Jr. and what Errol Spence Jr. had to say about Ennis becoming his IBF mandatory and whether or not he would fight him. Let's talk about that in this video. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. In this video, we're going to talk about the welterweight division. We got a lot of really good fights coming up in the next couple months. And after that, th these couple fights that take place, there was on the horizon a big fight between Errol Spence Jr. and, and Jerron Ennis. Or should I not say big fight because Jerron Ennis is not as well known a name, but a significant one that Errol Spence Jr. has asked, answered a question about whether or not he would fight him. Uh, but before I get into that uh, subject matter, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please accept my invitation to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And also make sure you hit all notifications so that you can get them all and not just get them occasionally. So, so, uh... Errol Spence Jr. will be fighting uh, your Danny's Ugas coming up in two weeks. So there's a big press conference that's taking place, a lot of interviews going on. And so during these times when you have all these interviews going on, you find a lot of good information that, that uh, related to other fights. In this particular instance, uh, he was asked, he, Errol Spence Jr., was asked about Jerron Ennis, who is fighting Custio Clayton to become his IBF mandatory. Uh, and I do believe that that fight is going to be on the undercard of Jermel Charlo versus Brian Castano when they fight for the Undisputed Championship. And so he's Jermel, Ch so uh, Errol Spence Jr. was asked what his plans are. And specifically, he was asked about moving up to 154 pounds, and he was asked about whether or not he would fight Jerron Ennis uh, as his, you know, as his mandatory. And what Jerron, what Errol Spence Jr. said for the first time was pretty much lock dead center that Jerron Ennis is not going to get that shot at 147 pounds. He's going to have to follow Errol Spence Jr. up to 154 pounds. To read you what he said, he said. Um, he said, he's definitely talented, but right now I'm not looking at him. Uh, I don't I don't have anything really to gain. Ugas has a belt. Terrence Crawford has a belt. Those are the big, those are the, the big, huge fights for me. He is an amazing talent. Uh, hopefully he'll be on top soon. So that pretty much goes along, go along, goes along the lines of what Jerron Ennis felt about him becoming the IBF, uh, the IBF mandatory against uh, Custio Clayton. That, as far as Errol Spence Jr., that makes him, that makes that, you know, the mandatory irrelevant as far as getting the fight with Errol Spence Jr. Uh, your Danny's Ugas is the next fight for Ter for Errol Spence Jr. And after that, he's going to obviously is trying to fight Terrence Crawford for an undisputed title. And if he gets past both of these fights and he said he is gone, going up to 154 pounds. Um, he, he did, however, admit that he said, uh, look, I, he, he said that, you know, it's just like me when I was coming up. He's super talented, super skilled, and I wish him the best in the future. And he said, um, but he said that that fight is pretty much not going to happen. It's not something I think is unexpected. Um, however, it is something that I think eventually, provided Errol Spence Jr. fights long enough, that that is not something that where he's really going to be able to avoid that. Now, I had some people in my, in my live stream this morning uh, that for some reason think that there is like, like is something wrong with people for saying that Jerron Ennis is a top level fighter and is going to take over the 147 pound division when Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford move up to 154 pounds. If that is the Ter if Terrence Crawford actually winds up moving to 154 pounds, right? What could happen is what's most likely going to happen is Errol Spence Jr. will fight uh, Yordanis Ugas. I do believe that Errol Spence Jr. will get past your Danny Zugas. If he does not get past your Danny Zugas, then then Jerron Ennis becomes your Danny's Ugas, your Danny's Ugas's um, mandatory. But I do still believe that that 
uh, your Danny's Ugas will fight Terrence Crawford after that if there's not a rematch clause. So that would postpone a Jerron Ennis fight with the winner with that winner. If Terrence Crawford wins it and stays at that division, more than likely he's going to do what Terrence Crawford did at 140 pounds when he became undisputed, which is move up and wait to 154. So any way it cuts, any way it cuts it, uh, I think that this generation, this generation of fighters that are really on top, who are all kind of in their 30s, you have you have Terrence Crawford, who's I think he's 34. You have Errol Spence Jr., maybe 32. You guys can correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong about it, but I think he's 32, maybe going, you know, 31, 32. Um, Terrence Crawford's just a couple years older than him. It maybe think he's 33, 33, turning 34. You have your Danies Ugas, who's also 31 years old. These and but you have Jerron Ennis, who last time I heard was 23. Not sure if he turned 24 yet. But there's like a seven-year gap in between those guys, and it seems like they're going to try to let all of that stuff play out and have Jerron Ennis, you know, come up behind them. That for Jerron Ennis, I think, is an unfortunate situation. Because Jerron Ennis, if he was able at the age of 24 years old, 25 years old, was able to get the Errol Spence Jr. fight or able to get the Terrence Crawford fight, I think that, first of all, I think that he has a, the legitimate ability to win that fight. I don't think that it is a far off, a far off um, scenario where Jerron Ennis could pull those fights out. Um, however, uh, if he and if he was able to do that, I think that that would pretty much you know, catapult that dude into being one of the big superstars in boxing. They could really bring, you know, that get a lot of really good fights and big fights going on at 147 in May for that next generation of boxers after Canelo and Errol Spence and these guys go away could really be the face of boxing in the United States. And if you're the face of boxing in the United States, then you have a legitimate chance of being the face of boxing in the world and really could bring in, you know, a lot of very, very, a, a, another golden era in, in that division. There's also a lot of, so I think what's going to happen with Jerron Ennis, he's probably going to have to wind up, you know, fighting Custio Clayton, fighting the, you know, fighting the, the um, What's my man's name? Uh, Jamal James. He may actually be able to get the fight after if the fate bakes the the belts are vacated against you know whoever the winner of of Stanosis, Stanionsis, and Butiev is. Um, also, you have Speedy Rashidi Speedy Rashidi Ellis at 147 pounds. You have guys like Josh Taylor who will be moving up to 147 pounds. I have a suspicion that that even um Devin Haney will probably be at some point in time up at up at 175 I mean 140 147 pounds you know but it just doesn't seem like it's going to be in the in the cards for him to get you know the the biggest names and the best fighters for it you know the opportunities for them right now now I would not say that that is Errol Spence in this situation if anybody were to say that Errol Spence Jr. was ducking Ter ducking Jerron Ennis I don't think that that would be a fair assessment be, you know, becoming undisputed in your t weight division. And after you've been in that weight division that long, moving up after you're undisputed, I don't, wouldn't call that necessarily being, you know, ducking. Jerron Ennis, however, may very well win some belts and go right up to 154 and have those same guys there. And maybe we can get the fights there anyway. But it is what it is. I just want to share you what share with you what uh, Errol Spence Jr. said about Jerron Ennis. For me, it's you know, I'm not I don't mind that because I like both guys and I don't want to necessarily want to see one guy knock off the other guy. But at the same time, in the interest of seeing the absolute best fighters that are out there fighting one another, I think that that fight falls into that category. But anyway, you let me know what you think in the comment section. If you and again, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please accept my invitation to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. Leave a comment in the comment section and thank you again for all your support and thank you for coming to watch the video. And with that, uh, I'm out. Peace.